All right. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, this week's Crypto Mastery class. Thanks for being here. And so I'm um, going to dive into some some charts here and we're going to go through the news and all that good stuff. So uh, if you guys are ready, then why don't we uh, dive in? Uh, we're just asking everyone how they like the summit. Lots of great content. Uh, loving it. Lots of revelations. Good. Leslie, congrats to you for making the time. Um, please don't think you'll do it later and put it off to the holidays. We're going into the holidays. Every interview uh, is so powerful and in its own way. So and if you're watching the recordings of this, uh, we're talking about the crypto future of crypto summit that has now ended. Uh, you can, however, still get the recordings at futureofcryptosummit.com slash VIP, along with some special speaker or bonus gifts. And so I guess what we could do is... Let's see here. Uh, pull it up and give you guys an eye eyeballs look at uh, what it, it's all about. So here's the summit. We had 27 speakers and uh, excellent speakers that uh, all covered these topics that I'm showing you here from DeFi to wallets, wallet hacking, Bitcoin, the future of Bitcoin, future of money, CBDCs. Uh, you know, owning your uh, crypto, how to prevent it from getting stolen, how to pass it along to your heirs, leaving a legacy, trading bots, market cycles, how to get wealthy in the next uh, market cycle, all these great things, protecting against catastrophic losses, and uh, much, much more. You can learn more about that at futureofcryptosummit.com. And so again, that was uh, a live sort of live-ish summit that we had pre-recorded, but we distributed it live. It's now uh, taken down and you can still buy the recordings, as I said, for $97, just a little bit of token amount for handling all the production, recording, and all the great content in there. So just to get that out of the way and you can find out more here at futureofcryptosummit.com. And depending on when you see this, it does come down this Sunday. So you only have until November 4th. That's in four days. One, two, three, four days. And uh, happy Halloween, by the way, everybody. Hope uh, you guys all have some fun plans. With that in mind, uh, nothing too scary in the markets. Uh, I guess that's a good segue. You know, uh, Bitcoin, just to jump ahead here. And this class is predominantly to talk about and show how to decipher the crypto mastery indicators. And so, um, you know, we'll be using that throughout. And so we have a bullish, sorry, bearish TSI sort of forming there. I'll come back to all this. You know, I do want to start with the, uh, that's interesting. Hmm. Okay. Uh, we have some interesting signals here, a big green box here on the ERI Pro. So I do expect to be pulled back down here to support with this rising 21 day EMA. And so we see that on the uh, daily TSI sort of turning red. It can stay up in these upper areas for some time, though. So this uh, sort of bullish window, this green box here shows money flow. And uh, that's a good sign. You know, so a brief pullback, you know, if it goes sideways too long and it zigzags, then we might have the Bart Simpson pattern holding or showing. But uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Either way, I think that um, we do push higher. Uh, like I said, once we broke 32K, that line in the sand right here, a uh, very important line in the sand. I think we should come back, retest it a little bit, and then it's off to the races. Uh, also, our trend indicator showing. Uh, the first profit taking sign, the dollar sign, and generally we want to sell on the bag of money. So in the next two days or so, be a good time to be taking profits on this, uh, keeping some in the markets, always have a moon bag, but to take some profits to buy back lower is the uh, big picture here, the TLDR. Uh, by the way, I do have my uh, Moonstream uh, M3 hat on, as you can see. And uh, so if you guys so would like to learn more about that, it's just here at moonstream.io slash M3. I know many of you here who are live are uh, in that class already. And that includes our indicators. You can read more all about that here. So no, no long commercial here. Lots of great tools. It's our highest level active trading uh, training that uh, we have. So you can learn more about that here. And uh, there's me hanging out with Jerome Powell who says buy Bitcoin. Okay. Uh, as you can tell, we have a little fun here. Um, all right. So just to dive into the news, you know, BlackRock's ETF that everyone's been talking about, uh, starting to get more and more support. You know, actually they had the uh, SEC chairman, Gary Gensler, on a clip in the last day or two. Uh, at least that's when I saw it basically saying, yeah, he, basically him saying, there's no reason there should not be a spot Bitcoin ETF. You know, just kind of signals he's not the one pulling the strings. He sort of said, I'm surprised that there isn't one already signaling that there should be and will be soon. Um, you, you know, so probably BlackRock's been leaning on those guys and that, uh, you, you know, the big money there to hold off on it till they were ready. 
So um, we can, here's Crypto Panic here, just pulling up some news articles and uh, we can unpack some of what's going on in the markets here today. And then we'll dive back into the charts. Let's see, uh, Bitcoin's white paper, and that's okay. Spot Bitcoin ETF, magic number to push BTC. Um, that's interesting. Past 40,000. I've been saying, I think once we break 32, pretty fast uh, move, you know, not straight up, but pretty fast move to 48K, 50K. I've been saying that for months, and now the other talking heads uh, are also starting to say that, to flip flopping their uh, previous uh, messages. Um, uh, won't name any names, but some pretty prominent. Uh, Analysts who are saying at least one particular, um, uh, all right, one name, Gareth Salloway was saying he thought we'd go to 10K. And I, I said in his, like, in his chat, I said, I think you're wrong. Uh, and now he's coming around. We're going to 50K. Uh, of course, can't tell the future, but we've been largely right so far. And uh, yeah, so spot Bitcoin ETF. Here's the magic number. So let's see what they're talking about here. And we'll turn that thing on to the highlighter. So basically, some unknown research firm. Mm, institutional in, uh, research firm they're saying let's see saga aum the market's currently pricing in inflow so that's interesting we haven't talked about that basically he's saying that the significant variable is how much assets under management institutional money brings in a spot etf launch uh, would um, allow these instruments to gather you know, more money in from the public and start advertising it and uh, I'm not sure what all these little things are here. Uh, and then basically that would be a trigger for the market. So he's saying the market is currently expecting an inflow to be between 500 million and one and a half billion from uh, the ETF uh, inflows uh, initially. I think that number could be quite a bit, um, quite a bit larger. So basically it's saying the magic number to push Bitcoin price past 40,000. Let's see what they're saying here. A uh, crucial date on the calendar is January 10th. So I also had heard rumors and posted on Facebook. I think we'd know by January. And that's the final deadline for the ARK and 21 shares application. Wouldn't that be interesting if ARK Invest got it first? I don't know. You have to be open to anything, especially when everybody assumes something else, like BlackRock will be first. Everyone's pricing that in. Everyone's assuming that. And um you know, I, I I say pricing that in, I'd say sort of betting on that. Um, can't quantify what that would mean necessarily, other than they have $10 trillion, uh, allegedly, that they can put into the markets once they start to turn around. And once they have, um, you know, they have that money earmarked, they already have it. They don't have to go fundraising like a lot of these other platforms, Fidelity, ARK Invest, they'll all be advertising to their customers. So let's see, Bitcoin price could skyrocket in March. If this happens, we'll look at that. There's a lot of clickbait here and headlines just trying to get our attention, of course. Let's see, uh, this is stuff we already know. Green signal on the ETF would be a game changer for the entire asset class. So just to point that out, not just Bitcoin, the rising tide lifts all boats. So when that happens, then all altcoins, you know, certainly I think Bitcoin rallies first, obviously, then ETH because uh, Ark Invest has applied for a big, sorry, an ETH spot ETF. I think they'll likely uh, get that at some point. You know, and then the altcoins. Uh, you know, the as prop profits are taking from Bitcoin massive bull runs, they usually they don't go back into fiat. They'll sometimes go into stable coins, but a lot of times they'll put their profits in the altcoins because again, that rising tide lifting all boats, even the little ones. Okay, so um. And certainly we've done well with some of the uh, micro caps in the last couple of weeks in October. Uh, we uh, had a couple that we recommended up 100%, 90%, 100%, you know, um, so that's encouraging. And uh, specifically that was, uh, I'm drawing a blank. We'll get into the charts and uh, and talk about those. Uh, one of those um, being, um, we'll get into that and show you those. So basically open room for large park pockets of capital that, today can invest yeah because you know a lot of these um companies that invest money they because of the lack of regulation they can't go and do risky investments that are not regulated so the spot etf basically allows all these other companies financial advisors pension funds um you know uh, bringing prominent capital markets money in to these markets maybe sovereign wealth funds and things like that so this is uh, this is all happening just you know kind of Take it all in. This is history in the making. Big uh, big things happening here. But this headline has definitely hooked us in here, and they're not talking a lot about what they mean by this. So you know what? Um, 
Uh, so t- t- uh, they hooked us in with that 40K number. That's not really giving us a lot of information. So they have a little flag wedge pattern forming here. It doesn't, you know, typically these break to the upside. So that's good. And the Fibonacci. Uh, all right, let's get on with this. This article is kind of a letdown. All right, uh, let's see. Bitcoin is even a 50% rally. You know what? Um, I'm not going to go through all these because uh, they're all trying to kind of get ads, people to click on their ads. And um, I, I trust RTA. So let's do that. Just looking for things that we can, that may be breaking and might be important. Let's see. Uh, SHIB, we won't talk about. Uh, let's see. Bitcoin open interest enters the overheat zones. This is interesting. Anytime volatility pushes higher, you know, kind of brace for impact. And uh, open interest refers to derivatives and the uh, options open interest on that don't want to go into the down the rabbit hole with that but i uh, was the founder of options university and we used to teach uh, option trading uh for many many years and uh it's it's a bit complicated stuff so um uh, you know, open interest and um, that basically signals that one side of the market's betting heavily in the options markets and uh, on volatility, opening up new contracts. And that could be uh, puts or calls. And so heading, uh, you know, basically it's saying brace for volatility. So, you know, based on the chart we saw, uh, we've come a long way. I think we get a bit of a pullback um, and then higher. Although I think a lot of shorts got wiped out on this last move. And so, um, you know, maybe people are piling on the long side. Usually the market is wrong. The masses are wrong. So uh, we'll kind of uh, dissect that with our indicators, overlaying that in a moment. So I don't see a trem- tremendous amount of news right here. As I said, nothing uh, too scary. Um, I did hear something recently, though, that I want to look up and may Google this because uh, did you guys hear that Cynthia Loomis is, uh, is trying to basically um, go after Tether and... Um, uh, and uh, and what was the other one? They're they're going after. Let's see, uh, Cynthia Loomis, Tether, uh, news. What's going on? So, so um, yeah, let's take a look at this for a second because I'm not sure she her largest uh, backers are these um, you know the people who would be hurt by this, and so uh, yeah, Binance and Tether. So basically, uh, let's see, get, let's get after Binance and Tether. Cynthia Loomis says, urging the DOJ to, uh, follow through on that. I don't know why I blanked on Binance. I mean, obviously Binance is in their crosshairs already, but, um, you know, she's basically going, uh, against these guys because, uh, her largest backers, I don't want to get too far into that, but that's kind of who she works for. And her largest contributors. I like Cynthia Loomis though, you know, saw her speak, at the Bitcoin conference, and she was talking about how her state of Wyoming uh, is taking the gases from from oil and basically uh, the refining gases, refining gases, I said refining, refining gases, and using those to power Bitcoin rigs. So uh, so that the methane from the mining, which usually goes into the atmosphere, contributes to global warning. They're burning it cleanly, I, I imagine. Well, who knows? But uh, they're using that to power the Bitcoin rigs, leaving more like a zero footprint. So I do like that about um, about her. But th- the point of this is if they were to um, tear down Tether, uh, that would be a, a huge uh, shock. So while everybody's excited and uh, exuberant about these bull moves, we have to be prepared for more shock and surprise. And, uh, and so in the charts, we'll kind of tell us when we need to be most careful. Okay, so you know the news can be a catalyst and usually is at these extremes. So we've just had a big push higher in Bitcoin, you know, we, uh, you know, a big news like Tether imploding, although, you know, the big question mark with Tether is, do they have the backup assets in case there were a run on Tether? And they, it's been FUD for years. It comes up every market cycle. It's always nothing, a big nothing burger. And um, so, but, the, you know, pretty much the, I know I'm going down the rabbit hole here a bit, But, um, you know, the government, the DOJ, they want, you know, they want most people using Coinbase and that's kind of so they can keep an eye on it. Uh, The um, uh, Sam SBF, who's in the news as well, has been talking about how he was working with regulators to uh, try to kind of help them go after Binance. So, you know, a lot of uh, pawns and players on the board right now. I'm not going to get into Sam 
uh, case. It's not really affecting the markets. Uh, why would it? It's that's all priced in and, and over. But basically, uh, Loomis, uh, Senator Loomis, and Attorney General Merrick Garland are urging the DOJ to reach a charging decision on Binance. Uh, so that sounds a bit scary. Certainly, if um, Binance got dinged, now for the U.S. markets, it doesn't really matter. Binance U.S. can't use them. People are moving to Gemini. I like Gemini. I think those guys are solid. Uh, Coinbase have my my own personal question marks and issues there. But at any rate, if Binance were to um, you know get uh, sanctioned by the U.S. They're not here already. I don't know how how that really plays out. I'm more worried about Tether so that um, see that happens. Let's see. They want to expeditiously conclude investigations of allegedly illicit activities involving Tether. Okay, so there's where we're getting into some scary stuff. And let me just unpack this a little bit because I want you guys to be aware this could be an issue. And um, let's see. A Chris. Okay. Well, all right. So this is new news and kind of sad to hear. But uh, lawmakers remarks that Hamas launched a coordinated attacks supported in part by illicit crypto transactions providing significant terrorism financing. Um, well, yeah. See, I, you know, let me sidestep for a minute. I just want to re remind everybody, remind everybody where most people's head is on crypto. And I was talking to uh, an old uh, family friend at an attorney uh, who lives in Spain uh, prior to this call. And when I brought up crypto, he was sort of the, the first thing that came to mind was, isn't, isn't that uh, that uh, Sam FTX guy uh, going to trial that, you know, all those people lost money like you know, Tom Brady. And so that's the perception that comes to mind when most people right now, many people, think of crypto the scams all the problems and so you know a, a lot of this uh, uh does work against us and so we are still early we have to remind ourselves and there are still things that need to get sort of sorted out here and so um this obviously not a good use case providing significant terrorism financing and um you know but uh in the end as we'll get to in the charts this is an excellent time to be investing for the long term we're seeing the signs and um and we'll get to that so uh this is interesting our bitcoin etfs headed for one epic gensler rug pull someone else had proposed this also that the um you know the nine thousand dollar alpha play here would be if blackrock uses their influence to tell the sec not to approve the etf yet and uh and not give any reason but if that news broke that they were denied on the first round, it would probably tank the markets because the markets are pricing in that upswing and uh, further upside. And, and why would BlackRock do that? And for you know, and have uh, Gensler sort of do a rug pull uh, on this in the short term. Now, it's this is definitely going there. Um, you know, the uh, the head of uh, BlackRock, Larry Fink, has now become an evangelist. He's very pro Bitcoin publicly. So you always have to question, uh, is he taking a page out of JP Morgan's CEO, uh, Jamie Dimer? Um, so, the, you know, the uh, diamond, Jamie Dimon, uh, who used to say, you know, stay away from Bitcoin. Meanwhile, they were accumulating. So is this another page out of his playbook where maybe, maybe we're speculating that uh, Larry Fink and BlackRock, uh, you know, they are recommending it so that the public goes in and buys, and then they basically do a rug pull and the markets drop again. Everyone's terrified. They say, all right, that's it. I'm never doing that again. This thing's a scam. And and then they push prices down farther, and that's when they start really buying it up. We just don't know. Uh, we have to be aware of these, uh, these scenarios. But in the end of the day, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. And that's what our indicators are so good at and sort of showing us when things are overbought and when to kind of step out. Uh, just seeing the comments here. Uh, yeah, thanks, Lisa. Tether and Binance. So basically, you just can't really trust what publicly is being said by people who have a financial incentive to manipulate price and uh, buy low and sell high. I mean, that's how they buy low and sell high. And, uh, you know, we can't necessarily do that, but... Um, Anyway, but we can certainly follow the footsteps of the elephants and ride things higher 
once we kind of see their plays and their their footprints uh, using our signals here, which again, you know, we can see pretty clearly on uh, the charts because uh, that's what these are designed to do. So again, we'll come back to that in a moment here as we always do. Let's see content ads, Coindesk. Uh, which I, okay, I'll come back to that. That's to turn off my ad blocker. So we've covered the news there. Let's see how are we doing a time about 25 minutes in. Okay, uh, let's see. So we have here the open interest enters the overheat zone. You know, I mean, I would also say, where are we with the uh, the fear and greed index? Let's pull that up. You know, I think that's probably, yeah. So that's kind of similarly tied. Let's see, I'll bring that up on another screen and bring that over. And what I mean, similarly tied, you know, the, you know, we're, we're, we're due for some kind of a pullback. You guys, uh, these things, when they get overheated and get into the green zone, then typically we need a little bit of a shakeout. Uh, the markets are efficient. They go back to equilibrium. It's often the best times to buy or when we're down in the fear zone, as we know, and the best times to be selling, taking profits is higher up in the green zone. So uh, as of today, you know, this is uh, where we are. And just give that a, a little repost there. Uh, by the way, you can uh, uh, follow me uh, on the Twitters now, believe it or not. So, and uh, the, you know, started posting more and more there and certain short things that uh, what to watch out for. And uh, so let's see, you can find me at, you'd think I'd uh, have the, have that memorized. It's um, as I just changed my name there on the Twitter. So uh, anyway, I'll get that too. It's just Brett J. Fogel. Yeah. So there's, there's me from Moonstream Crypto, hence the hat. And I'm uh, doing some posts here. I just posted the fear and greed index and uh, got some other cool things in there we're talking about and uh, as well as talking about the summit. OK, so you can follow me there if you would like to. And um, as far as uh, just finishing off that thought so we can put that away, the there's the summit here. The um, uh, where's that open interest? Captor versus gold spot, Bitcoin, wind up to bend. We're jumping around a bit. The futures market may be overheated. And yeah, so basically we're, the, the chart itself, we see we're in a nice upper trending channel. We're at the upper end of the channel. And uh, so basically uh, we want to be looking at this for a pullback. But if I could draw on this chart, uh, you can just see this would be an excellent place. If we come down and retest, I mean, 32K really want to hold there. It could it spike down to 30K again. We could based on this trend line, but really I want it on a, you know, a spike and then a bounce. The key would be closing back above 32K. We do need to come back and, and retest 32K in my opinion. And, uh, but we can see here is uh, over when we have this chart, uh, when the open interest gets really high like this, there's a lot of volatility. So here we had a big short liquidation. Here we had a big long liquidation. So we're getting in over here as well. We saw some long liquidation. So we're getting up into this open interest is getting uh, over uh, overheated. So that's worth uh, keeping an eye on as well. All right. So what else do we have? We have um, just some more bullish news on the BlackRock ETF. This is just kind of PR that BlackRock's pushing out most likely. And so they're trying to make the perception. And, uh, you you know, if, if I'm right on this, you guys owe me a, owe me a steak dinner. <laughs> because uh, this is sort of some next level sort of pontificating, certainly dubious speculation, as Ben Cowan says. But, you know, all this sort of, sort of semi-lukewarm positive news. And, you know, so you're according to a BlackRock slide deck. So we're sort of setting everyone up to start buying Bitcoin. And then maybe there's a, something that tears it down again. So not only do they want to accumulate lower, they, they want us out of this game. They don't want to be competing with us, the retail traders uh, at the lower levels. They want us buying in at the high. They might say, why do they want that? Because the retail traders, you and I, are their liquidity for them to exit. When BlackRock and the bigger institutions in Wales, when they want to sell their Bitcoin, they need buyers, right? So in the whole, um, you know, life cycle of investor emotions and all of that, the Wyckoff, uh, the Wyckoff patterns, the Wyckoff cycles, you know, that is the name of the game. They're accumulating down low and then they sort of, uh, they mark up price and they start getting everyone excited, excited, excited. And then, then when everyone's super excited and has FOMO and is buying, so I got to buy some of that Bitcoin stuff and the price is going sideways, sideways, sideways. That's how they hide. 
That's how they hide that they're selling is by just ramping up this into fervor where everyone, the retail public is buying at the top. Meanwhile, they're selling and creating, you know, getting ready for the next down cycle where they mark down the price. So, so that's how this, this is typically works. You know, so right now is a good time to be getting in. It's just in the longer scheme of things. Uh, and it's certainly better than at the top of the markets. But uh, anyway, that was a long kind of rant. Hopefully that uh, made sense. Um, but I think it's helpful to understand all these things and how to really see the news with uh, through a filter. Uh, let's see, curtail to try and crack down security. So some of the implications. This is sort of bland, uh, bland uh, article there it's about the ETFs. Okay, we've got that. We covered that. I'm just dying to get to the charts here. Let's see, crypto versus good as gold spot Bitcoin ETF aims to whip up U.S. demand. That's more of the same. You know, so they're pushing out a lot of um, pro Bitcoin news, and uh, you know, it's sort of kind of designed to get the you know these platforms want to get the clicks. They want to kind of get things that people are interested in. But um, this isn't really new news here, and I'm just wondering. Are they trying to push price up? You know, and it's not like there's a bunch of people in a dark, shaded room with locked doors that are doing this maybe intentionally. Who knows? But but I think collectively, greed is always there. And uh, in all of these, you know, all these bigger players, they know they can't just buy. They can't just go in and buy a billion dollars in Bitcoin. You know, they need to do it over time. And that's they do that in that that lower phase the accumulation phase and then they need to push price up and get everyone excited so that more buyers are coming in so they can sell instead of dropping price right away do you see that that's not that liquidity zone is created by all this news and getting people saying hey i've been hearing a lot more about that bitcoin uh thing and um maybe i should buy some i heard recently that this number of searches uh for bitcoin has just hit a all-time high so um, just keep that in where keep that in mind. I have a little bit of a contrarian uh, viewpoint. All right. So, uh, but we are waiting on that to be confirmed. We don't know yet if that will be confirmed and when. Uh, let's see. Let me turn this off here. This wants me to turn off my ad block. So, uh, but I do recommend ad blockers. And uh, we'll take a look at this. Crypto market breath widens signals bullish momentum. Uh, market breath is a... Technical analysis technique that gauges the number of tokens in the rally. Where's my little toggle cursor thing here? And uh, yeah, so basically uh, it's a lot of coins are going up. If it was just Bitcoin and Ethereum driving the markets, that would be a narrow breadth versus uh, uh, or the number of tokens participating in the rally. Let's see, trading screen. Wow, wouldn't you love to be here? That's a beautiful view. Uh, just yeah, I was just talking to my, my old family attorney friend who lives in uh, in Saint Sebastian in Spain and turned his laptop around, overlooked an ocean like that. It's beautiful. So uh, yeah, the Spanish think we're crazy. They think we work too hard. I think they're right. So let's see, Bitcoin up twenty seven percent this month, and a swath of alternative crypto. We're going to look at some altcoins, um, and I'm going to move on to that here. Uh, is moving so that's good and um shows there's market breadth mm -hmm. so stone tent okay covered that okay what else anything else anything you guys want to talk about and let's see alex says uh, perfect sense keeps us from fomoing yeah and um so uh let's see and by the way we're going to be using our crypto success checklist as we go through this and if you don't have that, if you're watching on YouTube, if you like the content, hit the like and subscribe button and uh, follow us there. You can also uh, find out how to get this trader checklist. And uh, since I can never remember the actual URL, and if you can go to moonstream.io, you can find out about all of our services. But if you come down here to the bottom and the trader success checklist, here and uh, you can download that for free and it's going to redirect you to cryptomastery.org cm checklist so just give us your info there and uh, you can download this so basically this gives you a um, cheat sheet for how to know when it's safe to enter a trade okay so by checking more of these off i know many of you all of you guys here are live we do this every week so uh, you're already aware but uh xrp by the way uh, popping up above 60 cents again it's got some nice signals in there on the daily basis, uh, if we look at the weekly basis, uh, looks pretty strong here, actually. So uh, why don't we just talk about that for a minute? 
Uh, we are not uh, proposed, not, you know, not financial advice, but uh, XRP, you know, moving up. I think this is finally ready to go. Did you know they won the lawsuit uh, finally and it kind of got thrown out and there was just, it was nobody covered it. Uh, somebody that's not even in crypto told me about that. And I said, I don't think so. But he was sure was, he was right. Point is, uh, higher lows. Look at this wedge, this break. This is an excellent trading pattern. And so if you guys uh, are interested in XRP, you know, they have uh, beaten their court case. As far as I know, we uh, we could do a quick search for that. But here's what I want to zero in on. And regardless, look, this is where show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. And we had this nice bottoming part pattern here previously. Sorry, guys, I'm going to try to get a flat line here to show us this. So we had this nice bottoming pattern sort of breaking up higher. So higher lows, higher lows on this trend line support. Saw this pop up there. I would have hit the upper Bollinger Band. As we know, that's our take profit signal. Sure enough, it got above there. So taking profits, remember, you guys, in this rally, take profits on when they get above that upper, the third Bollinger Band, uh, they always pull back almost invariably, you know, with the exception of huge news and maybe Bitcoin. So but here on these pullbacks, these are our optimal entry strategies. So, so let's see what we have on this. I'll turn on the uh, ERI Pro and our ATR. So we have all these signals lining up. I'll get to the ATR in a minute. Uh, we do have a new version of the checklist that we're working on. I just have been busy with the Crypto Summit. I need to take some more screenshots for, uh, for to finalize that. But what do we see on the weekly chart frame? So we have time frame. We have the early reversal indicator here. So hence the name. And uh, but our trigger is the confirmation signal is this TSI. These two alone are like 90, 95 percent, especially on the weekly time frame. Signals bigger money is coming in, more accumulation. If nothing else, if this is all you do, this bull run, you're going to be very happy with these uh, these two. So ERI started here, but didn't really confirm until last week, Sunday, when the candle closed. And actually, you know, it was a bit early. It was, you know, certainly do open these up. It was coming up a little bit higher than here. The confirmation, though, is closing above the 20 line. So right now it's Tuesday, um, and unless we had a big market pullback, uh, I, I think this TSI is still going to close above here, but we have to get to Sunday to confirm it. But I would say that XRP looking bullish here on those two things. The uh, signal line is about to turn green as well, so that's good. We want to catch it right on that cross. So if we are to jump back over now, let's see, where do I want to be? I jump back over now to this. I'm going to pull it out so we can pop back and forth. Is the ERI showing a green up arrow? Uh, so we had that. How did I get back here? So we had that uh, there, green up arrow check. And then here do we have the TSI green and above the 20 line. So that's check. So the TSI, this is a no, it's a green but on the red line is no green and on, sorry, uh, TSI green and above the 20 line. I'm sorry, I'm buggered that. The 20 line, let me make sure that's clear. The 20 line is right here where the cursor is, right? So standards, uh, standard zones on most oscillators in trading above 80 is overbought. Here's that 80 line above below 20 rather is oversold. So coming back up above 20, on the TSI and uh, and having it turn green. So that's our second check mark. So now we're looking pretty good. We like that. Has the signal line turned from red to green is the third one. So that's when we go down here and um, uh, let's signal line. Do we, where's the picture of the signal line? That's this lower one. Yeah, sorry, where it says no and then yes. So the signal line is red, green is yes. So if we go back to this one, currently red, about to turn green though. Uh, these are all of our part of our proprietary indicator suite that uh, if you're watching the replay, you can learn more about at cryptomastery.org and learn all about our secret weapons here that we use in the markets to uh, nail these market turns and that we have been for uh, two years now. Uh, and so you can see here, these are when these two line up, the TSI, uh, ERI, TSI, very effective. And then we'll look at the ATR, et cetera. Uh, as well. So, you know, many of you guys have seen this, but you can go and read these and also uh, people's reviews. If you're watching this and seeing this for the first time, please go and read these. So, all right, um, back over to XRP. And then really we should start with Bitcoin, but uh, we landed on this. Uh, it's a good training example for uh, what we have in that. What we also have is the trend indicator starting to turn green right there. Okay. So 
on the we would come back down here. Now we've got a three out of 19 score. That's pretty good. I'll typically be starting to invest in projects at two and three out of, out of this top number. And then this trend indicator, is it showing a bell? So we're not showing a bell yet. And really what we should, I'm going to change this to is this, this line, is this line green here down below? Oh, no, does, the, does the trend indicator have a mid green line? Okay, so that's, uh, we don't yet. We're sorry, we do. <laughs> We're just jumping all over the place, you guys. Uh, we have this trend line turning green. Now, the trend is, is more to show follow through. So we have the ERI, which is early reversal indicator, lets you get in early. The trend strength indicator showing you, okay, this is confirming it's going up. We're following the money, essentially. And then the signal line has some other math and quant stuff behind it. So we're, you know, the ideal way to trade this is start adding to the position dollar cost averaging each time an additional signal fires. And uh, then in this trend indicator, you know, these things will repeat. So often a key and a bell, the bell is the buy signal and the bag of money is usually the sell signal. So you can see we go through many multiple cycles of this. So we don't have a bell yet, but we do have the green midline. And then there's other things you can layer in bullish engulfing candles. I know you guys, many of you have seen this, but it's good. Uh, repetition is the mother of all learning. So right back here, we had a bullish engulfing candle. So that looks good. We don't have one right now, but that's a perfect example of one. And then, so we'll leave that turned off. Is the candle body at support though? You know, it really is. It's coming off of this strong support at the 21 day EMA. And pay attention to this pattern because you see how the 21 day EMA is heading lower. It's true that this is a lagging indicator, but it really has... Uh, it has abilities to predict the future. I, I, I had to stop there and say, do I want to say predict? But you know, I've been doing this a long time. When the 21 day is, starts to curve up and, and is on top of the 50 day, that means there's more incoming momentum going higher, almost invariably. And since we have it with our other signals, we have this ERI, the TSI is green. This is a this is a strong pattern that I really like. And I think we you know, potential to go up at least to this area back up here and likely up to this 0 0.8080 mark. Uh, because of and uh, based on the upper Bollinger Band, upper Bollinger Band, the way we modify it is is our is our best take profit signal, and that would be thirty five percent move. You guys uh, beats a sharp stick in the eye, doesn't it? Um, so is the price above the twenty one and fifty EMA? Yes, it is. It's the price above a rising support trend line. Um, you know, it is here. We have a trend line forming here. We have this trend line here. So you know, these are all things now. Uh, we are at a score of seven out of 19. This is certainly a, a trade that I would be, you know, looking to get into. So uh, not financial advice, but there you go. If you're watching this, uh, you know, my forecast is it goes to 35% higher up to around 80 cents uh, in the short term. You know, um, some people are saying this thing takes off and really explodes. It's certainly possible um, because of the um, uh, mass adoption they have worldwide and certainly uh, is, uh, you know, despite all of the claims it's not decentralized and all the purists, a lot of them don't like it, uh, they they still continue to grow at a massive scale. Uh, I'm not a big XRP proponent. I'm not against it. I am a trader. So, uh, you know, take that with a grain of sand uh, why we're talking about it. It's more just showing you the chart. Let's do this. Let's look at the top gainers here today and let's do a quick refresh to make sure these aren't, aren't old. But... Um, Let's see, and I'm going to filter some of these. I don't really want to look at things that have really slow market or low market caps are ones I'm not familiar with, but we do catch some great winners here sometimes. Uh, this is one I'm not familiar with. It's 711 on the total market cap. Probably not one you want to be playing around with, probably really thinly traded. Uh, so these are prone to market manipulation. Um, all green on the radar, though. That looks good. This is a weekly time frame. Uh, let's see, one day, one week, one month. Now, why are these reversed? The I don't know how that happened. You guys can change these, by the way. Um, the time frames I like to use are, I like to have a week, then a day, and then we go into the longer time frames, though. What am I doing? I, I, I totally see daily, weekly, monthly. No, that's right. I drew a, drawn a blank there. All right, never mind, guys. That's how it should be. The daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, all green on the radar. So look, that's a, it's an excellent signal for whatever this thing is. Just keep in mind that it's very low volume uh, and it's at this upper Bollinger Band already. 
Okay, so but uh, typically see the all green on the radar is good. Oh, uh, hey, by the way, I want to go back just for a second to XRP because I missed uh, something I wanted to show you, and that's the average true range. So I'll turn off the Bollinger Bands, and uh, we see that the 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 HER is great for catching these turnarounds early because it signaled entry back here, even port side went sideways for a while. So these are all ones you can layer in. The ATR average true range is a really good one as well to uh, to kind of see and signal when these things are going to likely go higher. Okay, so jumping back uh, to this one here, we're going to look at a couple. If you guys have anything you want me to look at, I can. But this uh, BitCan, not familiar with it, never heard of it. Let's take a look at MobileCoin. And let's see what's going on with mobile coin here. This is how we found ATOR, by the way, which went up 100. percent It was uh, it was on the leaderboard here a couple of weeks ago. Mobile coin. Uh, I don't like this because it's below the 50 day moving average. It has sell pressure back here. It does have an ERI. The TSI on the weekly is starting to turn higher. What's the daily look like? Daily looks actually well. It's overbought. It's above that Bollinger band, but. Mobile coin. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's how you can use our indicators along with the standard indicators. So at the current moment, it's overbought. Look for a pullback on mobile coin. But you see this right here, that 21 day crossing the 50 day. Uh, that's, uh, you know, a huge, it's a very bullish sign that uh, I like to see. And I'll zoom out here just to see when these things get above each other, especially with that kind of velocity and uh, and slope. So I'm just pulling up my screenshot soft software to take a picture of it. But let me zoom out a bit. So, you know, these coins, they all have their own personalities, as I have been saying. And you can see here, let me clean up the charts, turn off this ERI and the Bollinger Bands. You can see this a little better. So just looking at the 2150 day EMAs. Now, would you say the pop quiz when it's when the price, when the 21 day, the, the yellow line is below the green line, the 50 day, <clears throat> is it bearish or bullish? Well, we can see that it's, you know, that 21 exponential moving average is often a resistance rejected here in the 50 period as well. So down, heading down, heading down, heading down, heading down, got back above. When it got back above, had a nice little spike and then a pullback and then it pushed higher again. So we love these sort of bounce plays. And um, so I would be watching very carefully here. Uh, you know, this is high risk. I'm not familiar with the project, but, you know, dipped down and dropped, failed again has a nice breakout I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised to see it pull back here and then shoot up again so that's I want to kind of keep an eye on if you want if you like those plays and you're more of an active trader that would be one to watch I'm going to leave mobile coin on here just for a minute and see what do they do um is this all mobile coin range pattern more gain expected I don't know who these people are uh, and so I was mostly looking to see what they did. So I'll look at that later. What else do we have? Vector space, anything AI, you guys keep an eye on. We have a whole section and a watch list and AI that, um, and our own watch list I'll pull up shortly so that we can look at some of those and vector space AI, um, you know, let's see on the weekly time frame. looks decent it's got that 50 week moving average let's look at a daily time frame looks to be okay so we're getting some order blocks on our eri pro but and a new bell so see this looks pretty interesting here the atr would have gone green recently so this vector space looks interesting i'm going to add it uh, to our uh, ai list so it's already on our ai list so we've already been watching this so let's um maybe segue just for a moment over to that uh, our other watch list, uh, the AI coins. So basically, mostly down. The so vector space is the only one that's up. Look at that, huh? Okay, so that's interesting. And uh, that's well, there's other one up CQT, but most of these AI coins are down. Uh, let's turn off the ATR. Let's see. Covalent though has a bit of getting. See these green blocks. So it, this always proceeds. I won't say always, very often, if if most often proceeds price pushing higher, these show buying pressure. So if we turn back our ERI, you know, uh, the, the arrow's not there, but I like that buying pressure, that green box. That means it's unlikely to go down if there's buyers in this range. But uh, so CQT, 
Uh, here's what I would do on this. I want to kind of see, I want to have an alert set when it breaks up above that recent resistance. I love one of my favorite patterns is just coming up, breaking a resistance level and then retesting it, buying on the retest bounce because that's usually when it shoots higher. And uh, so kind of like we saw over in this range, right? So push up, pulled back, shot up higher, pulled back, shot up higher. So anyway, keep an eye on that. Um, for example purposes though, you know, let's just see the the rest of the AI coins having some, I won't say they're doing bad. They're pulling back to support many of these. Uh, and uh, so, okay, I didn't want to, okay. So we can't get too overly excited about this sector, but we're seeing some on VXV uh, sort of pushing higher on that. All right. So basically uh, we already have that on our watch list. Uh, let's uh, do one more thing. I'll jump to our crypto mastery watch list we can just kind of see at a glance what our main coins are doing i know i'm getting to bitcoin but bitcoin's not doing a whole lot eth solana up let's see uh, opening solana up on the main charts so uh kind of coming into resistance area here uh, but a nice order block on solana on the weekly time frame um solana looks good here uh let's unpack this a bit what am i looking at 21 week coming up uh, above the 50 week, had some nice push higher. And I had uh, it's just a note to myself that my buy trigger was hit. So all mostly green on the radar, getting a little overbought here, but I'm not concerned about that. Let's go to a daily and uh, let's come back in. So I do, it's nice looking chart. Solana, if you miss 30, if you miss Solana at 35, when we recommended it, I recommended it in August of 2021. I said it would pull back to 35 and then shoot up. And it did exactly that, went up 657%. So uh, anyway, keep an eye on Solana. It, it's This is definitely one I would say to have as part of your portfolio. So, you know, in terms of that, and just uh, to keep true uh, congruent with that, I have somewhere uh, my own little top cryptos watch list for my friends and family. And uh, that makes sure Solana is on there and maybe even the XRP. These are just out of my top watch list. But many of them are in here, not hiding them from you guys. So Rune, now Rune's been on a tear. Look at this uh, on Rune. Let me make this bigger. And we'll, so it's overbought on the daily. I would expect, hmm. Well, here's the thing. The nuance on the TSI is it's okay. It can stay up here for a long time in a bull market. Where you want to watch out is when it starts turning red and heading lower and then breaks below the 80 line. But uh, as of now, this can go sideways for a while. We have a key, which means we could have another bell. We have our order block on this. So Rune Thorchain also looking good. Uh, this was our recommendation back in December of 2021, I believe. But um, but yeah, this looks like a nice chart. Let's look at the weekly on Rune. And may big order flow. Big order flow. So... Uh, sorry, I want to make sure I don't misspeak at the um, not order flow, but buying pressure and order blocks. You know, this is this is money flow, not order flow. These are orders placed ready to buy at lower levels, a.k.a. Uh, support. OK, so uh, let's see a couple of things we've been watching lately. Strax, you know, how to break it out. Definitely keep an eye on Strax. Do you, do you see a lot of these uh, kind of things happening here? And with that green box of uh, orders, there's a big box of orders here and that's good. Orders are good. Customers are good for business. So uh, there you go. I uh, would keep an eye on, uh, on Strax. That's that, that weekly there. Nice upward trending on this. Okay, so uh, let's see. We can jump down our list here. Unify pulling back a bit, having some trouble at this resistance level. These are all ones we've been watching. Uh, INJ is up 90% or was 90%. So I recommended it back here in October 5th, exactly in our retire rich inner circle. So we had it at 90%. If you're interested in learning more about what we do uh, with these, uh, you can uh, have, if you'd like 90% winners. Also, um, you know, can't guarantee financial returns, but we've done two of those last month. Uh, one was ATOR, was 100%, uh, INJ, 90%, and pulling back into support. You can find out more about that at moonstream.io slash M3, like we talked about there. And, uh, and sorry, guys, I don't mean to make this end of commercial, but we're here to grow our community. Uh, we do these classes for free, and I would hope that you guys would like to learn more. If you, again, if you like what you're seeing, Hit that like button, subscribe. We're trying to, we're pushing toward a couple hundred subscribers. It's slow going, but I'd love to have more people in here. 
All right, where were we? Uh, talking about uh, this list here. That's still the AI coins. Um, this thing's a bit off. Total market cap. Let, let me put this away. What's interesting too, though, is total market cap. You know, we uh, we're also at a resistance level where this thing really gets exciting, and we unpack this more on our Wednesday class and the M3 Active Trader class is when we start breaking above the market cap here, this resistance level. This is when things explode, and if that other article had any um you know if they had known what they were talking about where they said this gets bitcoin to forty thousand to me it's breaking above this level on the total market cap right around 1.25 trillion i have it set just a little bit higher than that uh actually i'm going to bring that down because it's uh it's crossing up one two five trillion i want to get in or i'm going to know right away when that happens so uh but you can see this zone total market cap uh, very good at calling these tops and bottoms or not not calling it necessarily, but showing it. So here we had, again, the ERI TSI nailed it right here. Uh, ERI farming first, TSI also confirming. And uh, we can see when those two uh, co uh, coincide. It's highly accurate back here and back here on the bullish side and then also on the bearish side. So you guys can see that and certainly... On these uh, total market tops, the uh, total market cap, rather, the the top of the, the overall markets was three trillion. I should probably label that. So if you guys aren't watching the total market cap, make sure that you are. Gives you some great clues where the big resistance levels are going to be. Three trillion was the total market cap, and then we had this down here at two trillion. You know, give or take. I'll do a dollar sign, keep it consistent. And then that was also a top that could not break through. And that's why the 1 trillion was so important right down in here. And we lost it briefly, but it was a fake out. Can you guys see it? But that's why it's so important that we that we had we held there. Uh, so here, you know, this uh, 1 trillion levels got a hold, but we're in this sideways range now. And until we break above it, we could still break below it. And so we have a bearish TSI on the... Uh, the daily here, so another cycle down. You know, typically these things break on the third or fifth attempt, in my experience. So, you know, here's what we could see. We can see this thing cycle back down. Let me get the uh, right tool. Let me do this cycle back down, and then, you know, something like that, or probably more along the lines of like this, and then a higher low. Okay. So that that's what really what we're going to be watching for. All right, uh, with that out of the way, what's what's the radar look like on the total market cap? Mostly green though. It's encouraging the quarterly. So when these all align, like this is one of the other crypto mastery indicators. When these all align, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, that's a go for me. And uh, sometimes, um, you know, I used to do four hour daily, weekly monthly so you guys use what your time frame tells you but uh you know the i like this uh, setup daily monthly and three months and again all you have to do is set those and change them just come in here and change the time frames and uh yeah so basically that's what's in there so let's take a look at uh, basically jump out here we've got inj Let's talk about Bitcoin. Uh, we still have this bull flag pattern playing out potentially. I do like that the uh, monthly T or monthly MACD is turning higher. That's very bullish, starting to look like, starting to look a lot like November of 2020, and we're coming into November of 2023. Look at that. So that uh, that would be great because this thing sometimes goes sideways for and just stagnates for a while. And uh, so after this big, perfect parabola on the downside, we're seeing some upside on that monthly MACD and also this uh, bull flag potentially playing out on the higher time frame. Yeah, interestingly, as we covered last week, this coincides with a $210,000 Bitcoin projection on both the flagpole measured move and the 3.618 Fibonacci extension. So uh, that's one to uh, certainly keep an eye on, like like the looks of that. So, and then um, here's another look at that as well. I'm not sure why I have it on there twice, uh, three times. It, well, this is in a nice upward trend channel. So the monthly on October looking very bullish. So certainly we want to see that. Well, no, guys, we're good. It's October 31st. I, I will publicly say, look for a very bullish uh, sort of 
continuation here in the coming weeks, if not month, to push up here to that 42,000 at least. But I think we're, I think we could, let me just see, you know, the 48K, I'll show you where I'm getting that. But th that, I think we could get up in the 48K, 50K by December. Yeah, so... So uh, that's what I'm seeing. Um, the only thing is getting a little bit overbought here on this TS side. No, we're good. We're good. Yeah, it can stay up there for a while. So lots of good looking charts here to look at. We've been waiting for this for some time. I don't see anything really else looking that great. Uh, veracity. Let's look at Veracity, which is one that we've been keeping an eye on here lately. And... Uh, now we're coming right up on the hour for class. So again, if you like what you see and you'd like a little bit more in-depth training on this, uh, join us at moonstream.io slash M3. You get a cool hat when you sign up. You get access to the indicators and you get access to me on a daily basis in chat and uh, doing a, a Wednesday class with the in-depth TA like we're doing now and less news, more TA. Um, you know, this is a pullback area, this thing uh, lower high. Um, I think this would be ideally see this thing pull back here. I don't have my EMAs on here, the exponential moving averages, but a pullback here should push it higher. A VRA is definitely one to have on our radar. And I believe we have it. Uh, I'm going to add it to our watch list there because that that's a good one. Um, good company, good project. So um, seeing a question come in, I'll jump to that here in a moment. Let me just see if there's anything else here we want to look at. Uh, some of the names on these things just have to make you laugh. Smooth Love Potion. Um, okay. Um, what is this circulating supply? 41 billion. Stay away from these, you guys. Uh, this is These are rug pulls and, and dangerous. I mean, uh, if you want to throw $100 at it, you, you don't need. Uh, you can play around with these things. But um, uh, that's a funny that's a funny name there. Vib uh, one called Vibrate. I don't know what this is. Social media and content. I guess we can look at, uh, look at this. I'm always... Looking for a new ATOR, which we found on that list last month. So, and I just liked the chart. I didn't know what they did. This here, I'd have to look into it a bit more. But um, see these nice round bottoming patterns. People don't want to hear it, but this is the bottom of, this is a bottoming of the market. We're back in the bull. Phase one of the bull. So, you know, you want to kind of keep these things close by and, and find out about them. Learn new projects. They, they tend to pump quite a bit in the first stages or in the bull run. So I'm looking for the markets, news brokers. What does this thing do? This is going to be overall news. Uh, let's see, vibrate white paper. What do they do? Okay. Let's take a quick look. Uh, and then I'll look at the, the comment music analytics for industry professionals. Uh, musicians are all broke. I would not touch this just flat out. Okay. I mean, um, I, <laughs> It's a it's a smallish. It's not a small niche market. the The market that has any money to use this is low. Maybe I'm missing something, but generally, I like to invest in coin projects that have an ability to make money, because that's what drives them. And uh, uh, so who's saying this? Uh, P P J saying uh, so true about musicians. I've been in the music industry twenty years and just getting out. I mean, I, I mean, I love it. I've got an electric guitar over in the corner. I used to play a long time ago. I like to pick it up every now and then, <clears throat> but uh, no money in that, <clears throat> you know, unless you're Eddie, like an Eddie Van Halen or, um, you know, rest in peace. But uh, anyway, uh, Eddie passed, didn't he? Yeah, he did. That's a shame. Um, so question is, some of it was amazing. Watched every video. Great work. Okay, I'll put this up while you're giving us kudos. Again, you guys can find out and get the <clears throat> replays and, and have access to each of these videos. Uh, at futureofcryptosummit.com slash VIP <clears throat> or just the regular domain. It will um, direct you there. So thanks for that. Want to look at CHR Chroma, uh, about 300 on the charts. I mean, notice been pumping. Okay. And some major wallets. Want to get your thoughts on TA and fundamentals. Chromia. Okay. Uh, let's do that. I'll jump over to our, actually the daily chart that I have saved here. And so CHR on uh we can just do it on uh, binance so <clears throat> this is the right one chromia chr i guess chroma chromia whatever so you well first thing i see here pj is uh, always look for these trend channels you know and they they do tend to stay in these and the best thing to do is try to look for the new trend channel 
And I don't, I think it's looking like it wants to retest. We had a nice base here, but if it were forming a new upper trend channel, you know, you want to kind of keep an eye on what, what's the new channel look like. The only data points we have on the upside are this. So, it, you know, this could be the new trend channel. Our uh, daily TSI is bearish. It's rolling over here. So I would be a bit cautious here on that. But if you could buy it toward the lower end of the trend channel, that, is, that would be the place to do it. Uh, we did, you know, did have a shot here. ERI TSI signal right in here. I don't know why our trend indicator is not showing up. I'm going to re-add this. Uh, Might have been, uh, had to be maybe it was updated so and there's one called the uh trend pro but the trend indicator here is there it is okay so just got uh disappeared there for a minute it's it's showing a well it should, we had a look at this guy i do want to point out what i on the trend indicator what i love about it ignore the key for a second the signals are designed so the key says hey there's a there's a new trend forming Pay attention, and then the bell is the buy signal, and then you stay in the trade. The first dollar sign is a good time to take 10 or 20% off of the trade, take profits. But the bag of money, uh, and, you know, a lot of times, not all the time, but many times it signals that the top of that little run, and then you should sell the majority of it and then wait for another key and a bell. And it served me very well. So now we're getting a key, but it went down. There's no bell. So you perfectly nailed this. Bought it here, bought low, sold high if you were on this one, right? Isn't that cool? And uh, again, you kind of almost expect to have Mario Brothers from, uh, or Mario from Mario Brothers come running out. I've got too many things open and I just may have crashed my uh, screen here. I was going to try to pull up a Mario for you guys uh, here. I'll do that anyway. And uh, okay, here... And here, here. Oh, come on. It doesn't like to. Oh, you know why? I remember why. It won't do it on this. It only shows it on the charts. So probably Mario's up here somewhere, right? So anyway, but you get the idea, right? Uh, if he were down on the lower chart, he'd be running along, grabbing all these coins. Cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. Anyway, I think that's fun. Uh, and so so that's why we love this uh, set of indicators. Uh, and but But back to your point, what else could we do? We've got a radar. A radar is inconclusive. Uh, we could put on the uh, ATR, the dynamic ATR. These are, of course, proprietary indicators, right? So, but ATR looking good. Also in that trend channel, though, I would, you know, I would, you could put a little bit in to start dollar cost averaging it. Maybe Mario keeps running, but the best place to do it is on these downswings on the bottom. So really, I'd be, I'd be a patient and wait for your ideal entries. Sound good? Uh, cool. All right. Good job. Thanks for the recommendation. Uh, I mean, the suggestion. So anyway, guys, that's all we have time for today. If we wanted to look at anything else, I'll just skim through kind of my master list. Mostly mostly sideways. I did say we'd look at Bitcoin. Uh, and I'll turn off the ATR here because the big move has already happened, right? And so the we had the ERI. Again, watch your indicators. ERI and TSI. This is perfect. We'll end with this. This is the four kings is what we call it. And uh, let's see, since we're kind of having fun with this, let's see, we'll make a... Uh, anybody see the movie Four Kings with um, uh, Marky Mark and um, what's his name? And what's his name? Uh, the uh, what's I, I'm trying to picture his name. It was uh, about the Iraqi war and then with Spike Jones. Well... That was a great movie called Four Kings. Uh, funny thing is, I was watching that and I recognized the, the character, not to George. Um, uh, you guys know who I'm talking about. He was on ER for a while. What's his last name? George uh, McClooney, right? McClooney. So it was McClooney, Marky Mark, and then this other skinny guy with Four Kings. And the funny thing about the funny, the skinny guy is um, I went to high school with him. That's Spike Jones. I knew him as Spike in college. I mean, in high school. He used to ride his BMX bike around. We all nobody thought we'd need to mount to anything, but uh, he went on to make movies. Uh, did in movies with um, Francis Ford Coppola and married his daughter. And um, anyway, all this useless information nobody you guys don't care about. But uh, what I was looking for is if there's some kind of a, a meme called the Four Kings. Should we use this one? How about this? Hang on a second. 
There we go. Four kings. So what I mean by that, what do we mean by that? We have, so down in here, we had the ERI. Bear with me, and then we're going to wrap up class. We had the ERI, number one. The second king is the TSI going green and above 20 right there. And the third is a signal line going green right here. And then the fourth is the bell. So when we get all four of those, it's a very high probability set of indicators. And so in, you know, with the trade checklist, you can start, you know, start drabbling in, dabbling in, dollar cost averaging in, whatever you want to call it, on the ERI. As soon as the TSI goes green and above 20, that's usually where I'll enter, sometimes on the ERI uh, a little bit. And then so 25% here, 25% and keep adding to the position. But you would have been fully in by here, not to armchair quarterback, but this is why the indicators are so good. And we would have been up 22% on Bitcoin. Uh, slightly less of today, but you get, you know, certainly possible 21%. So uh, that's it for today, you guys. Again, if you'd like to join our Wednesday class, it's a little bit more in depth. Uh, you can find out more. Of course, you can find all of our services at uh, moonstream.io. And uh, that looks like this. We've got some free reports. If you're watching on the, on the YouTube, and basically a newsletter. We've got a weekly newsletter that's excellent. You can sign up for free. You can sign up for these classes for free. And uh, so to get invited to be on live, you can do that here. The Trader Success Checklist, you can grab that. Some free reports. Uh, this one here used to be called Blood on the Streets. I released that December of 2022 in the depths of the bear market and said, now is the time to buy. Uh, many of our M3 students joined then. And uh, we we nailed it. Uh, Bitcoin went up 100% from there, as did a lot of the AI coins. And then, of course, there's a report here called The Five Mistakes Bitcoin or New Crypto Investors Make. So you can uh, find all of those there. So definitely uh, want to take advantage of that. But most importantly, uh, if you want to get in these classes, many of the people here are live are. Uh, that is the Moonstream, the M3 class. Get this cool hat. You get all of our stuff. Uh, and you get a lot of stuff. Members area. A high probability cheat sheets, uh, timely videos, membership area, we'll go through all kinds of things. You get access to me to ask questions in the chat and um, and uh, there's a tremendous amount of value in there, with a number of different payment options. So that's just moonstream.io slash M3. Okay, everyone else uh, who's already in M3, welcome. I'll see you guys tomorrow and have a great day, everyone. All right, take care.